So coronavirus is pretty bad. We all know it. We all understand it. Except apparently for the few conspiracy theorists that were going to pop up anyway. But as terrible as the virus is in its primary symptoms like dry cough and fever and a lot of people dying, it's gonna be the death of the global economy. Because yes, that is exactly what is happening right now. A lot of people have been saying this for years, myself included, but the way that we do capitalism at the moment and for the past couple of decades and really like a long time is uh, not very stable. You might say highly volatile. We exist in an ever quickening cycle of massive corporations and their shareholders, which I personally like to refer to as the aristocrats on account of how utterly disgusting they are, privatizing their profits while they socialize their losses. And the uh, proverbial chickens have come to proverbially roost now and we have made our proverbial bed and now we must proverbially lie we fucked is basically what i'm saying the goal of a functioning capitalist system is to give individuals and businesses that provide good innovation and choice to potential employees and consumers the ability to thrive it's supposed to create a constant cycling of money from the corporations to the people and from people to the corporations so goods and services can always be exchanged. At best, the corporations are small businesses, which unfortunately in our world isn't really the case very often. Because that is what keeps the show going. It is not the money, it is the goods and services that the money facilitates the transactions of. Labor and products are the actual real backbone of the economy. What the American and by extension Western and by extension global actual capitalist system does is create bigger numbers for the shareholders every quarter. Unlimited eternal growth, the neoliberal wet dream, something that any economist with half a brain cell will be able to tell you doesn't work. It is not possible. In the physical reality we occupy, the laws of nature do not allow for that to happen. However, this system is still built on the backs of labor and products because it needs something that it can tack its empty numbers onto. That stuff is still the foundation of the system. Without it, it collapses immediately. And it turns out that when everyone has to stay at home, the exchange of goods and services kind of stops. You can't go to work anymore. Maybe your work suddenly doesn't exist anymore, as is the case for a metric fuckton of industries employing a massive amount of people. Suddenly, you no longer have the money to pay for goods and services. Goods and services don't get bought. The people who produce those goods and services have to downsize their operations, let more people go, pay the people that they do have less money, and then you have even more people who are unable to buy goods and services. There are fewer and fewer transactions of goods and services. Money stands still and the entire system just collapses because the foundation no longer has the energy to maintain itself. Now there are some people that look at such a scenario with glee. They welcome the collapse of civilization because they are of the opinion that their pet ideology will win the civil war that inevitably follows such a scenario when the much more realistic scenario is that they will get put up against the wall and shot. And there's two kinds of people who want that collapse. On one hand, you have the people who are so utterly destitute and have been fucked by the current system to such an extent that they have just given up completely because there is absolutely no way at all for them to ever gain anything. They are completely out of options and any alternative to the hell that they exist in is better than the literal hell that they exist in. And then there's spoiled middle class pieces of shit who romanticize the notions of rebellion and revolution because they've never actually experienced hardship in their life. I really hope that I don't need to remind you people that the last time this happened, 
The Nazis happened. So if you're one of those people who isn't looking forward to a couple months, maybe a year of Mad Max followed by whatever flavor of authoritarianism you'd never pick at the ice cream truck, what hope is there for you? After all, the slowdown of a hyper-accelerated economy has already happened. The kid is, has fallen into the well, the cat is out of the bag, it's done, there is no way of reversing it. It's tipped over, it's falling, the downward spiral has begun and there is nothing that can stop it. You will lose your job, you will lose your livelihood and your business will go under. The exchange of goods and services is stalled because we have to isolate in order to not die. Even if we wanted to, we couldn't get it going again right now. Whatever tiny sliver of hope to save the economy remains now will definitely be gone by the time that we can come out of isolation. If only there was a way to avoid all of this! It's UBI. It's that is what I've been slowly building up to here. Which you knew because you saw the title of the video. UBI, Universal Basic Income, is literally the one and only thing that can save us now. Yes, you heard that right. The only way to stop the civilization as such, and I'm talking global here, from collapsing is by giving the people in our respective countries free money. It doesn't need to become a permanent fixture, although it sure would be nice if it did because UBI is just in general a good idea, but we need it at least until the crisis is done. And here's why. The first problem we face is the imminent collapse that we have because money is suddenly standing still. People can no longer pay for necessities, for their rent, the food that they eat, they can no longer hire the people that they need for their business to function. Often entire business models have ceased to function entirely. Business models that have worked for thousands if not tens of thousands of years. Restaurants have always been a thing. Inns, hotels, prostitution, all of that stuff is no longer a thing all of a sudden. It just overnight disappeared. So what we need to do is give everyone the ability to continue acquiring necessary goods and services even though they cannot sell their labor right now. They would if they could and they will be able to again in the future, but if they did it right now, literally millions of people would die. Then in like two or three months when the first pandemic wave is estimated to have been passed entirely based on the current models that we have for such things because we understand these things quite well, we deploy phase two, the stimulus package. You just give everyone money again, but like a lot this time. It's a one-off payment, but it's a good one. Now you could do this from the very beginning, just do a one-off big payment right now, so people can also still use it to pay for necessities. That would be called helicopter money, but the problem is that the current situation is too unstable and too unpredictable to do that in a way where it would actually have the stabilizing and revitalizing effect that we want. Because most people in this time of crisis would just keep that money. Also, if you're worried about inflation happening, uh, about a year ago I did a video called That's Not How Inflation Works, which explains that UBI doesn't lead to inflation because that literally is not how inflation works. Now, if the UBI is the thing that allows the whole economy to go into basically hibernation, which is something that by default it really is not built to do, the stimulus package is an adrenaline shot to the heart to wake it up. The goal is to get people to spend that helicopter money on whatever they want. And need, obviously. We want to jumpstart an increased exchange of goods and services. We need to get that stuff moving again. This isn't just money for rent and groceries. That was what the UBI was for. We want people to spend this money to buy a new computer, new parts for their car, an extension to their office. We wanted to purchase a new phone, 
go out to eat at their favorite restaurant. We want people to use this money to pay for commodities because that is the most efficient and effective way of getting the economy going again and saving us all from collapse. If you're worried about how the government is going to afford all of that, just look at the multi-trillion bailouts that they're just throwing after corporations that don't even need it right now. That is how. That is the role of a government in a functioning and healthy capitalist economic system. When times are good, they are supposed to slow down growth so they can make a profit. And when times are bad, they are supposed to use those profits to inject them into the economy and get things going well again. This is how you buttress an economy against the natural and unavoidable boom-bust cycle that just exists. It's not created by anything, it's just how economics works. And it's also how you buttress people's livelihoods against unforeseen events like coronavirus. But with the bailout packages for massive corporations, you do not nearly get the same level of efficiency. The money just doesn't do the same amount of work because it isn't injected into the place where it could do the most amount of work. Think of the economy right now as a sinking ship. It has leaks all over, right? And these corporate bailout packages, they are a diamond-encrusted golden coffee cup. Helicopter money for just everyone? A bailout package for the people? Is a cheap industrial pump. It actually works because it facilitates the exchange of goods and services. You just get more bang for your buck. The other way just shores up the stock market, which contrary to popular belief, is not a good indicator of how well an economy is doing at all. Trickle-down economics is a political buzz phrase invented by neoliberal elites so they can fuck you in the ass every single day and it doesn't work, it has been proven not to work, it will never work, people at the time knew that it wouldn't work. And yes, everyone should get the helicopter money. I'd argue even children or like households with children in them should get a reduced amount of the helicopter money. We want that money to do as much work as is possible. That is how we save the economy and our civilization. Every single dollar, euro, pound, yen, whatever your currency is spent, will benefit you personally because it makes the economy stronger. And a stronger economy will provide you personally with more opportunities to apply yourself and make money. And yes, even those mystical lazy people that exist somewhere, even though UBI has been repeatedly demonstrated not to reduce people's willingness to seek work, will get this money. And if that offends you, the question I have to ask is, are you really so obsessed with lazy people not having nice things that you would deny hardworking individuals who would sell them those nice things from being able to support their livelihood? I mean, Jesus, even if they use the money to buy drugs, it is still doing work in the economy because the shadow economy is still part of the economy and a drug dealer is still a participant in the economy. The more bureaucratic and exclusionary these UBI and stimulus packages are, the less effective they will be at saving us. If not everyone gets it, people will save it. People will pass it on to those in their network who are not getting it. They will not be spending it in a way that actually saves the economy. There is literally no downside to doing this. We can only win because the alternative is the end of civilization. I cannot impress this upon you enough that we either do UBI and a stimulus package for the people and not just massive corporations, or civilization ends. Stimulus packages have been deployed to the public in the past with great success. And I am aware that the system requires fundamental reform, so things like this don't happen in the first place. I'm on board with that. But we need to be pragmatic and fix this crisis now, because otherwise we have a dark, 
dark future ahead of us. And this should be a no-brainer, given what the two choices are that we have here, but ask your leaders and you will find out that they care much more about shoring up the gains of the aristocracy than giving you a single cent that might in any way save you from starvation. Thank you very much for watching this, like, important video. Like, comment, subscribe, share this to relevant communities, but do not spam them. Consider supporting me on Patreon uh, or Subscribestar. These are, after all, like, tough times for all of us. Or buying some of my merchandise. Those are commodities. Want some distraction in these trying times? Try the short story collection. And in that spirit, stay safe. I genuinely hope that you personally, all of you, and all of the people who won't see this video, get through this properly and as unscathed as possible. And I also kind of hope that I'm wrong, because I, 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 while I have hope, I don't think it's gonna happen the way that it's supposed to. And see you around, cunts.